dumped here since the dawn of time. That's the beauty of the place. It's ancient in every way. Then you approach Glenvey National Park, a gorgeous landscape that almost sings with the music of nature. Vibrant with deer, badger, thrush and lark, a refreshing waterfall that plummets down sheer cliffs and a romantic 19th century castle at the head of a loch bathed in colourful flower gardens. The only catch is arriving in the forgotten county, is timing your arrival to the lifting of fog, so you can see through the curtain to catch a glimpse of the darn thing. <laughs> but it's well worth the wait. Upon first reading it, Colum was left wondering, was this from a travel book or a sci-fi novel? The Forgotten County. The phrase rolled around tantalisingly in his head, hinting at intrigue and dark secrets. Some of the very hallmarks he hoped might soon characterise his own story to be. He skimmed through his notes, wondering why he had never visited this esoteric corner of his native country before. Maybe he too had forgotten it existed. He remembered going west. He obviously hadn't gone far enough. Celtic ancestry, pagan rites, rich mythology, prehistoric burial chambers, dolmens, superstitions, gypsy fairy trees, home of the Gaeltacht, staunch Irish speakers, dizzying drop-dead scenery, labyrinth roads, he smiled. His education in Belfast might just save him from wandering around in never-ending circles. His grasp of Gaelic was precarious, but key phrases he could cobble together might help him over the worst. Tame culture, ka will of all I am lost. Where is home? And on will ishkabaha. Ogget, do you have any whiskey? He turned to another page and read the headline. Thanks be to God, we're not made of sugar. He'd find the phrase too comical to ignore. Colum needed no reminder of Ireland's limitless capacity for rainfall. Barbecues under cloudless skies in the sunflower and show me states of Missouri and Kansas were regular reminders of how little he missed the rarely changing national weather forecasts of overcast skies and scattered showers, AKA pissing rain. I had heard of Donegal's proclivity for wetness, the travel writer had penned, but wasn't prepared for what I experienced. It only rained twice last week, first for three days and then for four. Thanks be to God, we're not made of sugar, one farmer said, telling me it had been so windy the week before, one of his chickens had laid the same egg twice. <laughs> <laughs> Colum was even more intrigued by his final destination, literally a dot on the map. Bunalaka, or Brinalak for Anglophiles, a clump of homes in the shadow of bloody foreland, a stark heather-laden escarpment overlooking the broad Atlantic, and a spray of rocky western islands dotting the coastline. It's old, said the travel writer in his article, and I mean old, not old like ravens, or old like Jesus Christ, or Helen of Troy, or Tutankhamun, or Tyrannosaurus Rex. Much older. Imagine 420 million years on a great body of rock melting deep underground during a massive collision of continents, then Ice Age glaciers scouring out the whole area, cutting deep into the granite. A place with as many legends as there are twists in the road. 
But let me not spoil the surprise. Go there. See the place. Then try telling me if there's any place closer to heaven you might want your withered bones to lie. A shiver ran down Colum's spine. Either the writer was on something not normally prescribed or winter gloom had overwhelmed his senses. He hoped summer would provide a warmer welcome for him. But then he realised summer in Ireland were just winters by a different name. He leaned back, considering what challenges might lie ahead. The weather would be the very least of them.